at our stage of development, we recognize the important, important role of the state in service delivery and as an enabler of economic productivity in order to make this effective, it was necessary to build strong institutions of governance at different levels of government and at the, at the same time decentralize authority and decision making so that ordinary people's voices are heard and so the, that decision of decisions of government reflect their priority needs and inputs. It is also clear to us that for effective service delivery, accountability and transparency are key in dealing with some of these underlying challenges to the unit of our country. We realize that the most effective remedies come from our own historical experiences. And so, when faced with a huge and a divisive problem of millions of genocide suspects and an equally large number of genocidal survivors, genocide survivors <coughs> living in the same country, and in many cases, the same neighborhoods. We referred to our culture and came up with a workable solution. We chose a multidimensional view of the problem, justice, reconciliation, healing, and forgiveness, and sought a system that would enable us to move forward. Through the church courts, Rwandans were able to administer a difficult but necessary restorative justice in spite of, of opposition from many quarters. Another major objective of our government has been the social economic transformation of our country. Governments exist to enable their people to lead reasonably good lives. This requires policies and mechanisms that facilitate increased production, more trade, and attract investments. African countries, and Rwanda in particular, <coughs> recognize that we will develop if we enhance trade among African countries and beyond and have free access to international markets, trading in high value products. It is imperative, therefore, to establish good relations among nations on the basis of mutual respect. African governments should eventually aim to win ourselves off aid as important component of our development effort. This does not mean that we do not recognize the value of aid, as some people tend to confuse the argument. Is there bad aid? Yes, there is, depending on how it is looked at and what it does. Is there good aid? Yes, there is depending again on what it does and how you look at it. So rather, aid should be used to create conditions which will make it possible for us to live beyond it. Because aid should not be an end in itself, nor is it a substitute for business, innovation, and hard work. Aid that does not defeat poverty creates perpetual dependency, which in turn deprives Africans 
of our dignity and self-esteem. In conclusion, let me say that nation building is like building a house. You start with the foundation before you build the structure. The foundation comprises security, peace, and stability. But let me also reiterate that while acknowledging the value of external support and partnership, nation building cannot be dictated from outside. It should reflect and be informed by the history and the particular circumstances of the country. And so a nation that cannot find homegrown and innovative solutions from within itself to the numerous challenges of survival and growth is doomed to failure. No matter how much support that country gets from external sources. It is with this in mind that Rwandans have sought to solve the numerous challenges we have met by drawing from our history, culture, and experience, as well as drawing support and learning from others. I thank you for your kind attention and welcome, and I welcome your questions and observations. Thank you very much. <laughs>